All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about Thaddeus Russell, who is another character from the Joe Rogan universe that Joe ended up cutting off, similar to Dave Rubin. He's also a disaffected liberal, and he made three appearances on Joe's podcast. Then during the last one, him and Joe got into an argument, and he hasn't been on since. So if you're not familiar with this guy, he's a history professor that taught at a few different liberal arts schools. And I think Joe had him on his podcast because he's kind of controversial. And also he likes to talk about how important free speech is and how censorship is destroying colleges, which is obviously something Joe likes to talk about. I found that millennials are much more hostile to the principle of free speech than previous generations. Yeah. These are, these are kids in elite colleges who believe this, right? What do, you, what, what do you think those elite colleges do? They train people to take power. The most troubling things to me is that the faculty have been mostly silent about this. And well, it seems worse than that. The faculty's trying to well, enforce some, are some sort of on. mechanism. So, some, are, some of them are egging them on, but most, I would say, just aren't saying anything. And I'm talking about tenured senior faculty with lifetime job security are not saying anything. And I know many of them have reservations about what's going on, but mm -hmm. they won't talk about it. It's really infuriating. The faculty does have tenure. Wouldn't they want to express themselves? Like, you don't have to worry about getting fired. Like, don't you see the problems with this kind of thinking? But the worst thing that can happen to a white liberal, and I know this, <laughs> is to be called a racist. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. Hmm. Maybe worse than losing your job. Really? Yeah. Being called a racist and having people believe it. Oh. And that was from a podcast in 2015, so even before the Jordan Peterson and Brett Weinstein stuff had happened, which obviously the writing was on the wall, but this guy, he has his own story about being censored while working at a college. He claims in 2005 he was fired because he was white and he was saying stuff you're not supposed to say. Really? Yeah. I mean, I started becoming disaffected with colleges and universities probably 10 years ago. Uh, after getting fired from Barnard College at Columbia, um, and then who did you get fired for? Did you talk about it in the last podcast? Partly being a white man, oh, and white partly people. because Fuck of my ideas. People. What ideas? Um, about crazy. It was really, both those reasons. Yeah, people just well. I mean, I say things you're not supposed to say, and mm -hmm. my the renegade history stuff is didn't didn't go over well with a lot of the professoriate. And they wanted a they wanted a black woman also for that job. And then this happened to me again at Occidental. I was disqualified from a tenure track job about two years ago because of my race and because of your race yeah. specifically. Yes. That's what they said. Uh, I was told behind the scenes. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. How'd they say it? And also, I saw this article that Thaddeus wrote in 2010 where he talked about it, and I didn't see him mention anything about him being white. But he did talk about the ideas that he had that he made sound like were just too controversial for colleges. Like they just want to keep him out because they can't handle what he's talking about. And he almost makes it sound like his ideas are even too progressive or liberal for colleges. So that's where he completely differs from Jordan Peterson and the other Joe Rogan intellectual people. Because he seems to think everything that's going on at colleges that's destroying them is actually conservative ideas. As I said the last time I was here, you know, it is it is inherently conservative what they're calling for. Even though it's a sort of a left-wing movement, they're asking for Big Brother, either the college president mm -hmm. or the United States government, to protect us yeah. from ideas and speech and words. Right? So then what are we interested in? We're interested in those people having the power, having more power. That doesn't sound very left-wing or liberatory to no. me. No. Or radical at all. The, what's going on in college campuses is people making all sorts of truth claims about things like race and gender, right? I'm black, therefore I will always be this, that, and the other thing. You're white, therefore you are this, that, and the other thing no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. That is actually old modernist scientific racist thinking that's what these old racist geneticists eugenicists thought back in the day it's amazing again sjw's are actually really really conservative and ultimately racist all right so now let's get into why he was fired like i just said he wrote this article about it in 2010 but he was fired in 2005 and i'm sure you could tell right from the beginning here this article is very cringy and he's always trying to make it seem like what he's teaching in history and the conclusions he makes are all just facts and it's all accurate. 
And the only reason he was fired is because the higher ups there aren't open minded enough to what he's teaching. And he claims they called his ideas improper, frightening, and dangerous. So I guess what they're referring to and what do you talk about a lot and what he wrote a book about and what has become like his whole shtick is he talks a lot about the history of the clash between people that are interested in preserving social order and people that are interested in pursuing their own desires or like respectable people versus degenerates or good citizens versus bad and his conclusion from all this is that the more bad people have existed resisted and won the better it has been for society and the more freedoms we've gained from it i think that's pretty much the gist of it so he claims when he's working at bernard college to be considered for tenure he had to give a presentation in front of tenured professors and he said his colleagues were telling him he'd be fine and they'd be shocked if he wasn't considered for the position but in the article he says that was before my colleagues knew what i was teaching he always just sounds so douchey and he tries way too hard to be like i'm not like every other professor you guys aren't going to believe what i'm talking about in my class like just listen to this right here this is rough he said i was highly uncomfortable moving from the world of weed to the world of tweed I hated being professor, I cursed in class, I talked about sex, I used politically incorrect terms. My students said they had never heard the things I was teaching them in class. They called me bad thad. So clearly this guy is very full of himself and he's always trying too hard to make it seem like he's an outcast in whatever he's doing or a renegade. You know, that's become like his whole shtick. He wrote a book about it. He opened a university called Renegade University. And that's obviously a big part of what he teaches about history. And one time Joe even told him it was starting to sound pretty douchey. Yeah, so we're going to reinvent it, though. Renegade University. It's coming. Do you worry about that word being kind of douchey? Which one? Renegade. Oh, wh- uh-oh. Is it douchey? Well, it's a little bit. Uh-oh. It's a little bit like I'm a <laughs> it's rebel, my brand, bro. man. I'm a re- I know Renegade History of the <laughs> yeah. United States, your book. It's my brand. So I think it's pretty funny because I think he wants to seem like a rebel, like he's doing crazy stuff out there, and the people that are trying to preserve social order are attacking him. They don't want it to happen. You know, like them firing him from that college, if that's even true. It's hard to tell because... He just tries so hard to make it seem like everything he's doing is so edgy and people can't handle it. Books. My my book, Renegade History of the United States, was ignored entirely by the New York Times. And I know why, but it didn't really matter. Why? Why? Oh, because it says all the things you're not supposed to say if you're a good liberal, left liberal, bi-coastal elite person from a university. Like? Like... um, Martin Luther King was a conservative and hated black culture. You know, like, Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a very conservative person con- culturally, and he was basically an opponent of black culture. He, he, didn't, he was opposed to rock and roll. Like also on Joe's podcast, he was talking about boxing. He talked about that for a while because he's really into it. And then he's like, man, if any professors heard me talking about this, I'm done for. There goes my credibility. Even though he's talking about this on a massive podcast, and I'm sure they've already heard him talk about it before on Joe's podcast. So he's always trying to make it seem like he's a victim and he needs to be careful or he'll just be kicked out of every college. And he's always talking about how much he hates colleges and how much he hates working there. But I think he still works there. Like At least at the time of this podcast, he's still working. And it's funny because at the beginning of this clip, he's like, this is the reason I left that world and left that career. Well, I'm going to leave that career. He corrects himself. But I don't know if he did. And it just seems like he likes to complain about it because... That's the only thing he has to complain about. Like here he's literally complaining about how most academics don't like people that are physical and like playing sports. So he doesn't fit in with them. Most and, most academics, and maybe this is one of the reasons I had to leave that profession or I'm trying to leave that profession, is that I've always been a physical person too. I've right. always been, you know, just in touch with my body in various ways. I've always been into sports, playing them and doing stuff. I just, you know, and most academics, I'd say, or at least a lot of them seem to be completely cut off from their bodies. They just don't care what's below the neck. Uh, They don't care what they wear. They don't care how they feel. They certainly don't care how they look, many of them. And they don't talk about the body. They don't talk about things like this Mm. ever. And well, they look down on it. Yeah, the, the, that's and, the problem is the looking down on it. I you, think that's very short Like this conversation right now we had about boxing, if you just took that clip, that last 10 minutes, and you put that in front of, and you sent that to every historian in the country, I mean, my reputation would be done. 
No. I mean, it's already pretty much done. Yeah. Really? You, are you serious? Why wouldn't they just you, think are you're you a guy who appreciates boxing? I love talking to people who aren't from that world when I tell them about these things, and they're like, oh, of course that couldn't be. It's No, it's that bad. Well, what a silly world that is, then. It's That's that, it's silly. It's that bad. They would think less of me. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, I want to be a boxing coach. I'm not, really? I definitely, yeah, yeah. A self-censorship going on that's universal and profound, constant, omnipresent. Like, for instance, you know, I never talk about my love for boxing around academics, or I'm very careful if I do, but it's not even that. It's that we know that there are certain things that can't be said on a college campus, and so we just don't say them. Therefore, there's no need to police us. Mm. There's no need to yell at us and scream at us and protest. And what's the motivation? For the senior faculty who have tenure, meaning lifetime appointments, cowardice. That's all it is. Really? I think they're cowards. Yeah. If you are an adjunct like me with no job security, or if you're an assistant professor up for tenure, and if you don't get tenure, you have no career, I don't blame them. I get it. That's what I've done, too. I've policed myself because you have to. So this guy just tries way too hard to make it seem like he's an outsider and he doesn't belong in the world of academics, and he's always in fear of losing his job. Like every Joe Rogan appearance, he's always like, oh, I got to be careful here. You know, I'm going to get in trouble for this. But it sounds like he really doesn't have that many problems. And the one thing he did get in trouble for, he could be exaggerating, but also maybe he's just teaching incorrect stuff. Like this comment from this Reddit post towards the end here, like halfway down this last paragraph, this person said his response to academic criticism of his ideas is to accuse his dissenters of intellectual dishonesty, pernicious conservatism, or lack of imagination that is A, pretentious, and B, the sign the ideas can't be defended to academic standards. He portrays his failure not as a problem with his ideas, but as a failure of his academic peers. That goes against the core ideal of peer review in academia. He couldn't get his ideas published in academic circles, so he published it for pop consumption. That doesn't inspire confidence in the material. So that sounds pretty accurate. You know, it seems like he has this personal issue with what's going on in colleges. He feels like since they didn't accept his ideas, then they're trying to censor him, and it's a freedom of speech issue. And like I played in the beginning on Joe's podcast, you talk about this a lot. And during the second podcast, like the whole beginning, he's talking about how bad censorship is and how it's getting hard to teach because it's so bad. And then right after that, Joe, he said that some transgender people are crazy and Thaddeus got all offended and he's like, are you sure you should be using that word? Are you sure you should be calling people crazy? And him and Joe got into this argument about what crazy means and if they should use it at all, like if it stops people from being free or something. And it's so weird because this is right after he got done talking about how people get too offended easily and how it's bad to censor words. And I'm misgendering and I'm insensitive and rude. Well, there is a slight possibility that you might be crazy. And uh, if you decide that you're a fox, do I call you a foxkin? Like, what, what do I do now? And, and well, behaviors. You don't want to call them crazy, though, do you? Some of them are crazy. How do you know that? Well, I think some people are crazy. I would assume that there's a certain amount of people in this world, whether it is 1% or one-tenth of 1%, that are crazy. Define crazy. Um, insane, ridiculous, <laughs> preposterous. Well, that's been said about people who get punched in the face for a living. Sure, a lot of right? them are crazy. <laughs> that's true, though. But it's true. So you if know, you really want to allow people to do whatever they want, certainly, then don't call them crazy. Why does that have any effect on whether or not they do whatever oh, they I'm want? I'm not saying it's stopping them. Some of my but, favorite people doing whatever they want are well, crazy. But don't you want to encourage people to do whatever they want? Um, to be I free. definitely do, but I don't think that calling someone crazy for crazy behavior stops that. And if it does, then maybe you're not yeah. free enough. Yeah, again, they should not care too much about what you sure. think. That's my main point here. Mm -hmm. But if you're really in favor of making people feel free to make whatever choices they want, then using terms like insane and crazy is not helpful. These are conditions that are psychological, mental conditions that you could say, this person's crazy. Like when you see a bodybuilder mm -hmm. and they can't stop getting bigger because they're out of their mind, they look at themselves in the mirror and they think they're tiny, and so that they're 350 pounds and they're doing steroids and lifting weights 24 hours a day. You can say that guy's crazy, right? No. 
what you can't <laughs> no. okay you're, you're in this weird pc area now that you have kind of accepted because you go to school and you teach <laughs> and you're a part of it now but that's yeah. a crazy person uh, but we're, we're doing we're, we're talking about a man who's a bodybuilder who lifts so much weights that his body is like virtually exploding and they they have a dysmorphia where they cover themselves up because they always look tiny you don't think that there's a psychological condition there there's a psychological condition and doesn't that make you crazy um, what what does crazy mean? I don't. I mean, oh, we're getting again, semantics here. Doing jujitsu is called crazy. You know, I mean, it's it is. being a professor has been called crazy. Mm -hmm. Sure. So why why do you have issue with the word crazy then? Because you're pathologizing people's choices. You're saying I'm pathologizing people's choices yeah. if they lift weights until their body explodes. I knew a dude yeah. who uh, who literally did that. He, he was sure. a, a bodybuilder, and he died, I think he was like 31 or 32. We used to call him garden hoses because <clears throat> his arms had veins that were like garden hoses. They were these giant, I mean, it was insane. You looked at him, you had never seen a human being like him. He would lift weights. He was a white guy, like as white as you. He would turn fucking purple. I mean, purple. He was just 80% steroids. His body was just overrun. He was out of his mind. He was definitely crazy. Would you call that guy crazy? No. He lifted weights until he died. You don't think that's crazy? <laughs> what about martial artists? So do you not use crazy at all? Is that what's going what on? What about martial artists? Do you use crazy? Do you use the term crazy? And he does use the term crazy. Just later on in this podcast, he ends up calling Nixon crazy. And Joe's like, whoa. Like right after this whole argument, then he calls somebody crazy. Nixon being gay? Yeah. Never heard no. that? Yeah. Somebody wrote a book about it recently. Nixon was definitely crazy, but he wasn't. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> He was, yeah. he was an unusual man, that's for sure. Yeah, he was definitely unusual. Was. So this guy can't even keep up with his own bullshit, and he wonders what crazy means. He is the definition of crazy. Like, he wants to be an outsider so badly, but he fits right in with the other professors he works with, I'm sure, which is probably, like, the worst insult for him. Like, no, I'm not like them. I'm, I'm different. No, dude, you're talking about how people shouldn't use the word crazy. But then at the same time, he's like, oh, censorship is terrible. People shouldn't be policing their speech. But it sounds like the only reason he complains about that kind of stuff is because he is fired. And now he thinks the university and the professors are out to get him and they're trying to silence him. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was almost trying to get fired and he's trying to get in some kind of trouble. You know, he's always trying to be really controversial and edgy. So when he's given that presentation, he probably wanted some people to be offended by it and get upset by it. And then also after Afterwards, he could feel like he's fighting against something now and he has an enemy to go after and he actually talked about this a little bit on Dave Rubin's podcast and he said when he was in college he was a socialist obviously and he's studying the history of oppression and him and his friends would get all worked up about it but then there was really nobody for them to take their anger out on you know there's no enemy and there's nothing really to complain about because they're just some rich white kids that are going to some liberal school that have it pretty easy so then they start going after the president of the school, basically for no reason, just because they needed an enemy. And I guess he was at the top. In this country and elsewhere. And then you look around and you're an affluent, very privileged person in this world. You're in the top 1% or more. Every college student basically is that, especially mm -hmm. at Antioch. So there is no devil. There is no, there is no Bull Connor. You know, there is, <laughs> there, there's no one like that around here. So you have to find one. And so what we did was we kind of focused on the administrators, the president, you know, and, and his evil administrators. We just assumed. Right. They inherently have to be evil. We assumed they were evil and yeah. they were out to get us. And so we had to get them. And so one day, uh, two kids broke in, one night, two kids broke into the president's office and took a shit on his desk. And that was our, that was our statement. That was, that was telling him who was who. It works at many levels. So it sounds like not much has changed. Like then once he started teaching, there's still really not much to complain about. So he had to make an enemy pretty much. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. And it's still like the higher ups at colleges, that's still his big problem. That's what he complained about the most, at least on Joe's podcast. And obviously Joe, he likes to hear about that kind of stuff because he doesn't like what's going on there, even though it seems like it's for different reasons than Thaddeus. But his first two appearances on Joe's podcast, other than the whole argument about the word crazy, they got along pretty well, and Joe seemed to enjoy having him on. You know, they talked about boxing and I think jujitsu and the stuff going on at colleges. They talked about that a lot, but they never really got too far into gender politics or like race issues and stuff like that. But then during his last appearance, they started getting into that and it took a turn. And I'm sure Joe started to think this guy was way too far out there for him. You know, like the first few appearances, it was hard to tell how far left this guy was. 
because they didn't get into that stuff too much but then his last appearance like he made it clear what his ideas are and this was right after jordan peterson started blowing up like jordan peterson made his first appearance on joe's podcast i think just months before this so thaddeus brought him up during the podcast a few times and he said he agrees with him that he thinks the censorship is out of control and he thinks jordan should be able to teach what he wants in his classes but then thaddeus wanted to make it clear that he disagrees with all the other stuff jordan peterson talks about pretty much and towards the beginning of this podcast initially joe kind of agrees with what thaddeus is saying but then later on as you'll see they get into it a little more and joe like fully understands what this guy's trying to say and then he completely disagrees with him uh we need more people like him standing up and saying no i'm gonna say what i want in my classrooms and on twitter yeah you know, i mean I he's mean, a, I, I, again i i have major disagree what dis is the disagreement disagreements with him on gender and postmodernism, I think he's completely off, but you know. How so on gender? So, so he, and I know you, you agree with him on this, I think. Well, maybe, you, I don't know, I'm not sure, but you know, it's this idea that there just are two genders, that's it, and they're, atta no, they're I don't, attached I don't to biology. Think that. Good, okay. No. He seems to think that. Um, so. I think there's a spectrum of humans in every single aspect of yeah, being a person. I should say, I heard your conversation. Right? This is what I want you to do. Right? Get a picture of Yoel Romero and put it next to a picture of Andy Dick. <laughs> tell me they're the same thing <laughs> tell me this is even they're both men tell me it's even it's uh, nonsense <laughs> i mean right it's chaos yeah i've you know it's like have you ever heard a guy on the street say man that's a lot of women yes well that suggests there are women who are less women to that you know sort exactly of. yeah that's but exactly right there's a spectrum and yeah. there's also a spectrum in sizes i mean that's why so let me ask classes. you this okay so let's push it a little further okay then. so so far you're doing very well. <laughs> oh, in your eyes. Some people are screaming at their oh, computer believe right me, I know. Commies. Believe me, I know. Um, Roman's uh, going homo. So that's, well, no, I think you already are, I think you already went all the way, actually. I mean. So in the beginning here, you could tell Thaddeus loves it because it seems like Joe's kind of agreeing with him that there are more than two genders and he probably was surprised by that and then him and joe get into the whole transgender people in sports and who should be able to compete and what and all that stuff you know similar to the adam conover debate but i mean at least thaddeus sounded more coherent than adam like adam just had no idea what he's talking about at least thaddeus knows about sports and everything and his take on it is he thinks there should be divisions in sports based on like height bone density like just different sizes of people and they should be able to compete like with people that are equal to them which just sounds like it'll never happen i mean that's way too much work and even joe's like that's gonna be so complicated i or if they do they have it for like i think you need, i want you to go talk to dana and get this get this going we need we need uh, height uh divisions we need um we need testosterone you know divisions it's too complicated testosterone level divisions estrogen that. level divisions so then him and joe get more into gender and race and postmodernism, and this is where it goes completely off the rails here are some comments on the podcast they said this gender thing is so effed up i need my cabin in the woods another person said i'm a liberal gay american man i hear podcasts like this and all i want to do is go live in a cabin in the woods too i don't want to live in this world if things are going to be like this and another person's quoting thaddeus here and they say jordan peterson doesn't understand postmodernism but then thaddeus goes on to give the same exact definition that jordan peterson gives and then another person commented on that and they said and he personifies an even better example of the harm and shittiness of postmodernism race isn't real people aren't born man or woman everything is nothing and nothing is everything because if we define things we'll find differences and those differences scare me but i'm going to call other professors cowards wonder if we should let him know coward is a social construct must not have relevance so people were just tearing him apart here so okay gender jordan peterson um so i'm completely absolutely with him you know when it comes to that when it comes to policing of language right and no he thinks it's just wrong if you think you're a woman when you were born with a penis it's just by it's just sort of absolutely wrong well, I, I think you'd have to find him saying that before I'm you really say glad that. to hear you say that because I wasn't sure where you stood on that no I mean look man that's a big deal people I think that's a big deal it can get super weird when okay how about Rachel Dolezal mm -hmm. she identifies as being black great yeah Let's she's transracial. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I think she's correct. <laughs> Not now. Hang on. Let me let me uh, let me tell you what correct means there. 
Okay, she's transracial. Not, not in a not in an absolute way, right? Not oh. in a scientific, objective way. Right. But it's just as true as anything else. Meaning that because so race so since Joe was agreeing with him earlier about some of the gender stuff, I think he felt more comfortable to get into it a little bit more. And this is when it just goes completely off the rails. And you could tell this guy just expected Joe to agree with him here, or at least not question what he was saying. Because when Joe calls him out, it seems like he gets caught off guard. And he's like, we just went through this. Remember, we were talking about this. You're agreeing with me. That none of these things are biologically determined. That there is no natural essence to anything. That everything is a social construct. Which means that we now are free to choose our own destiny as individuals, right? What trans, much of the trans movement now is doing, which makes me so sad, is that they're saying that I am biologically, essentially, naturally, you know, in my core, a woman. What I'm saying is, no one was born anything. What? Well, I, you are losing me in a huge way. Why? You don't think that women, that some women are born women and some, you don't think you're born a man? No. What are you born? A, Why are you a man? For all sorts of reasons. For all sorts of reasons. Yeah. None of them being well, biological. We just decided. None, we just of being, none of them being the XY chromosome. We none just, of them being you have testicles. None we of them went, being you have a p thing. We just went through this whole thing. No, you didn't. Yoel Romero and Andy Dick. Yeah, but you. Why are they both men? But you, you, yeah. you're a man. Yeah. Right? We're not talking about the broad spectrum of masculine behavior. We're talking about no one is born a man. You're not born a man. I'm not born a I'm man. Saying, I'm saying that, the, no. I think, I think we're getting silly. Hold on here. I think it's the category of man becomes meaningless. Does it? Yeah, we just did this, man. No, we didn't. Why? We definitely didn't do Yoel this. Yoel Romero and Andy Dick are well, both It's a broad put in, category. Uh, the lines so get blurry broad. at the ends of the spectrum, and I think they cross over. Well, why do we do it with animals? When you have a male dog and a female dog, isn't there a Same male thing. dog and a female dog? Inventions. You don't believe there's a male dog and a female dog? I'm just saying dog? it's inventions. Now, hold on. So before you get... But it's not an invention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is, of course. But it's not an invention. One of them has a penis and testicles. Yeah, it's yeah. a the, male. The thing we see, we call it a penis. Sure, I get it. No, I get it. And that's the world I live in. Absolutely. So I operate in this way, by the way. So a dog I, penis world? You and I would agree <laughs> on all the things in the world that are dogs. Right. <laughs> this is not like complicated stuff. They're still men. <laughs> yeah i i mean i don't know where to go from here i mean i think i've ma i think i've made the argument i, I it's it's funny because you i thought you were totally with me for like an hour and a half and now it's like i feel like y you're not there and i don't definitely know what to not there with say that. i think there's a giant cause... spectrum of people but to say that a guy isn't born a man or a woman isn't born a woman i think is disingenuous uh-huh yeah so it's it's where the so all right, so I'm sure everybody has a headache at this point. I'm not going to play any more of that. But yeah, that was his last appearance on Joe's podcast. I guess there is a possibility that maybe he just didn't want to go on after that. But I doubt it. Like he was just starting his own podcast in the university. So he had a lot to promote. And going on Joe's podcast obviously would help that a lot. And I'm sure that's one of the main reasons he was even able to do that kind of stuff. So I doubt he's the one that decided not to go on Joe's podcast. But maybe i don't know it did seem like the criticism was getting to him he did like talk a lot about that but i feel like joe probably after that was just like all right this guy is too wacky for me and also there's some other stuff of course this guy has to have a hot take on the age of consent and there's this clip of him talking about it i think a couple of years ago with another professor and it's pretty bad i guess this is why they call him bad thad and listen you're talking to a guy who for 25 years has been making arguments more or less in defense of adult child sex in classrooms. Uh, and I don't know if the, I don't know if it's the same argument as yours, but I even authored a piece in the Daily Beast in which I called into question the age of consent laws, oh, uh, okay. which is yeah. you know, and I, I brought to well, empirical controversy over this. Sure. Yeah. On the rights based argument. I think, look, we, we make children do all sorts of things that Thank we don't you. want to do. Right? Thank you. you know, we make them go to, they go to church. We make them go to the temple. We tell them to go to school. They got to go to the dentist. They got to go to their, their sister's ballet recital. And, yeah. and we don't care what they say. And, and they want to do things. We say no, right? They, right? they say, I want to stay up and watch, you know, Creature Feature on WPIX until, you know, Thank two you. in the morning. We say, well, it's tough. That, that, that is all a child's life is, is coercion. Right, that's right. It's coercion by adults to make, and often to make the child do something for the adult's pleasure only. That's exactly right. 
Yeah. You say, yeah, you're, you're going to go to your great uncle's funeral, even though you want to go, and he right. was not in your interest. Right. So the rights based arguments are a little bit hard to follow. Yeah. So I think those are actually the controversial ideas that he's probably fired for having. I mean, this is so embarrassing. He's bragging about teaching that kind of stuff. And remember in the article, he's like, my students said they had never heard the things I was teaching them. What that children can consent. So I'm sure that's just another reason why Joe doesn't want to have him on again. But let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments. And then make sure you go check out my Patreon account. I have a bunch of videos up there similar to this video. You know, I have one about Miley Yiannopoulos, his downfall, and Kramer or Michael Richards, his meltdown at the Laugh Factory, and a bunch of other videos. I think over 25 at this point, and most of them are pretty long. So go check that out, and then make sure you hit the like button here, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video.